Welcome race fans to day one of the 2019 World Jet Boat Championships brought to you by Above and Beyond Compression. In behind me, the racers are going through their driver's meeting to determine the race course, their start times and their start orders for today's circuit races here in White Court. The first heat consisted of the four FX boats competing in this year's marathon. Tanner Froelich at the fastest time yesterday during the time trials, but we had some troubles getting on step and getting into the race. When he finally did get his boat into the race, he was on a mission, but still had almost a minute to make up on the other three boats. As we get a few laps into the heat, Tanner's already reeled in a few boats. A bit of drama struck the high maintenance crew of FX84 when their 350 expired halfway through the first day. Once the dust settled on an eventful heat one, Tanner Froelich managed to claw his way back to finish first in the FX class. Take us through why you were a little bit slower off the start. <laughs> well, my navigator's really good at navigating and telling time. We looked up at the thing there and then he's like, what does the GPS say? And I was like, no, it's a minute 40 late. So we jumped up out of the water there. So and, a bit uh, of a slow start, Derek, <laughs> getting the first round jitters out of day one here. Yeah, yeah, we're just crowd pleasers, eh? We, uh, we knew we had hot boats all. <laughs> Please, don't knock it, don't knock it, yeah. And while Tanner and Derek were happy with their first legs, Josh and Bryce were getting towed back to the launch, forced to take an unfortunate DNF. Came into this with some issues, and uh, we were just going to try and get a time. And we got out there, and we're in the channel, and it, it got worse and worse, and then just it killed us. So we uh, went for a float down the whole race course. Yeah, we the next boats to hit the river were the CX class, and following his success from yesterday's time trials, Brian Freeland was off to an awesome start. Brian ended up first in the heat, while the Kiwi fans were ready to cheer on the time trials fastest CX racer, Justin Hill, in heat two. Longtime racer Tim Harding edged Justin off the start, and they had a great battle as they headed upstream for the first island. Once Justin was able to clear Tim, it was smooth water from there, and he was able to put a gap and rest the field. The final CX heat of the day consisted of five Canadian racers. After a clean start, the boats headed back towards the start finish line, and that's where it all went south for Travis Bankston and Austin McDonald. After getting crossed in a back channel, the boat launched over a gravel bar, landing upside down on another one. Fortunately, both Travis and Austin were okay and able to get out of the boat unscathed. Well, we were on our way down and uh, we got stuck behind a little faster boat than us and we got into a back channel that we didn't run before and we ended up taking a wrong turn and over the bank we went and she was over from there. Austin looked like a real wild ride, but you guys are wearing Hans devices and five point harnesses and everything, safety uh, equipment sure did its job today. Absolutely, yeah, it was really good. And uh, Travis, unfortunately, looks like the boat's not going to be able to compete in this year's Worlds. What's in plans for you in the future? Are you going to try and get it running again? Well, there'll be a new boat for next year. Okay. She'll be back together. We'll keep our eyes open for CX-199. Good to see you guys back Perfect. on dry land again. Thank you. A full restart was called for the final CX heat, and Kelly Locke was off to a great start. Once Kelly was able to clear Trapper, Clayton, and Stacy Kelm, there was no looking back, and he ended up finishing first in his heat. You guys won your heat pretty handily today? 
betcha, yeah. We had a really good run out there, lots of fun. We don't have total times yet for the CX class, but how'd you feel you fare up against the other three heats? Uh, I think I think we'll be sitting up with a couple of the other big dogs for sure. I'm not sure where. It's hard to say because there's a lot of really good racers here, so don't want to say something too soon. <laughs> it was your first time experiencing time trials yesterday. Did that help you today? Well, uh, it, it did and it didn't. We had a breakdown yesterday, so we got the breakdown out of the way and we ran good today. So that was kind of a kind of a bonus round. The following two heats featured the 9A class boats competing in this year's marathon. Darren Cage was off to a great start in Heat 1, while international competitors Luciano Blanco and Stephen Shearing were battling it out further back. Darren Cage took the first heat and was hoping to keep Tim, Barry, Juan and Stephen from Heat 2 behind him. Barry got a great jump off the start, but Tim was able to reel him in by the top of the corner. Now heading back downstream, Barry did all he could to search for some clean water to try and get past Tim again. After an awesome day one showing, Tim Greber took the A-Class fast time with Barry second and Darren Cage finishing third. Tim, what's the secret? You were fast yesterday, you're fast today. I'm just glad to have got it done. There's so many little things that can uh, foul you up. I, I, I fear Dale's ran afoul of something and uh, I just didn't want that to happen to me. And I didn't want to make any uh, uh, navigation mistakes. They, uh, they, they tend to hurt. Next up were the U-Spec boats, and Regan Redlick was a bullet off the start line. Much like the A-Class heat, Randy Tinnett was able to reel in Regan by the top island and get around him for that ever-important clean water advantage. After six and a half exciting laps of racing, Randy managed to keep Regan behind him to lead the U-Spec class after day one. The white court crowds lined the banks to take in the action for the unlimited class. First heat was between Ross Schlottauer, Darren Weaver, Brian Austin, and Jeremy Hand. And Ross, like yesterday, was really able to find some speed in his boat bad of the hell. Ross finished Unlimited Heat 1 in first, with Jeremy behind, Brian third, and Darren Weaver fourth. As the boats backed in for the final heat of the day, the crowds weren't going anywhere. They wanted to see who was going to kick off the first day of the marathon atop the time charts. Heat 2 was between Gord Humphrey, Rick Hollingworth, Chad Burns, and Nigel Cromer. Riding on board with Chad Burns as he and Nigel Cromie are neck and neck off the start. Hop on with Rick now, and he's got to take the long way around this corner to stay in his lane 
and that doesn't set them up well to head under the bridge. As we ride along with the Kiwis, they've now jumped into second place behind Gord Humphrey. Gord got the clean water advantage, but Nigel and Bruce never let him out of their sights the entire circuit race. Finishing this first leg of the marathon with some more awesome racing action. As times came in, Gord finished first overall with Nigel Cromie second and Roche Law Tower finishing third. As we come to a close here on the first day of the 2019 World Jet Boat Championships, we're standing with U357 driver Gord Humphrey. Gord, how'd you guys manage to win this last heat of the day? Uh, we got a good uh, jump on the line uh, and then we pulled down to the first corner and we, had, we just managed the corners well. Uh, Nigel Cromie, he was on us like uh, relentlessly so if he would have got a little better start probably would have been in front but you know what we had a good uh, we had a couple good battles in a few corners there so it was interesting to say the least there's another unlimited heat just before you guys and Ross Schlottower took that one and he actually took the time trials yesterday is he gonna present a big risk for you guys coming tomorrow in the Peace River uh, circuit races oh yeah that's he has a big engine in that thing he uh, has some horsepower on us uh, has has tall legs and it accelerates hard. He's gonna be a, a top contender if that thing stays running for sure. Now you talk about horsepower, what kind of horsepower are you guys running? Are you running like a 1600 and they're around 2000 or what are we talking? Yeah, we'll be, we're almost 1700 horse and uh, Ross, you know, he can turn up probably north of 2000, but I don't know what he's using, but he's probably using all the 2000 horse, I'd say anyways. Awesome, well, it'll be exciting racing for everyone in Peace River tomorrow in day two of the World Marathon. Check out the action in tomorrow's highlight video. That's my fault. No!